Welcome back to another edition of New Life Today. I'm your host, Pastor Greg Tipton. So excited that you have joined us. We're talking about the Church of Sardis, the backslidden church. Now, we've been talking about the seven churches of the book of Revelation over the last several videos, which, by the way, you will be able, if you go to the uh, description box, you'll find a link that will take you back to not just the first video of this particular session, but it'll also lead you back to the others that we've been talking about. So make sure that you do that. Sardis, the backslidden church, or as many people call it, the dead church. But for this episode, we're calling it the backslidden church, and we're going to look at that right now. Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 1, Jesus addresses the fifth church of seven through the pen of John, and he introduces himself, and in the last video we saw how he did that, that he is uh, the one who has the seven spirits of God. We talked about how the Spirit of God rested upon him in perfection. He also holds on to the seven stars, and we're going to come back and take a look at that here in just a moment, but I want to move on to a very familiar phrase that uh, we see throughout all of these letters, and that phrase is this, I know thy works. The only problem with uh, this particular church is that it is uh, uh, a little different in Jesus's tone and in his words that he speaks to these. In the other churches, he says, I know thy works, and he usually gives them some type of commendation. However, with this particular church, there is none to be had. Uh, when he says, I know thy works, notice what he says. He says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. This was a church that had a lot of activity going on. Uh, there was the appearance of life. Uh, they have a name or they have a reputation that uh, they are alive. In other words, they have a name or a reputation according to the opinion of men, what men see. When we read this particular verse of Scripture, see, we see that they're alive. Uh, we see them moving from activity to activity and from place to place. Uh, they were an active church. Uh, they were full of programs. They were full of church activity. They were full of what men see as a successful church. And in the earlier video, I talked about how it would be very important for us to pay attention to this particular church because there is so much that goes on in this church that is happening in the church world today, and that is that we look at churches, and if there's noses to be seen, and there are backsides in the pews, and money in the coffers, and attendance, and programs, and things going on, we have a tendency to look at those churches as though they are uh, somehow or another a cut above everything else, and they've got it going on. And this was uh, this type of church. From the outside, what men saw, they saw that it was a very active church. However, Remember, Jesus uh, came to them in the, in the fullness of the Spirit of God. And when he came to them in uh, or having the seven spirits of God, they were not able to fool him. Jesus was able to see through all of the activity. And that's one of the things we have to learn today with the church uh, in, in the world we live in, is that Christ is able to see through all of the fluff. He's able to see through everything that's going on. Uh, the church that is busiest does not mean that it is uh, most blessed. Sometimes it's just too busy. And sometimes it's too busy to pray. Sometimes it's too busy to seek the Lord. And remember, backsliding always begins to happen 
when personal prayer begins to die out. And that is the catalyst. That's where it starts. Personal prayer, personal time with God, personal time uh, in the study of the scriptures and having that secret place where you meet with the Lord begins to become less frequent and it begins to be interrupted. And oftentimes it'll be interrupted with uh, ministry activities, but there is no worship going on. Pastors are uh, very have to be very careful of this, especially because pastors can get so caught up in the work of the ministry that they forget the most important ministry, and that is their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, there's been many ministers, many ministers that have crashed and burned in one way or another, whether it was. Uh, through nervous breakdowns, whether it was uh, through physical hardships and sicknesses because they did not take care of themselves properly because they were going after that next big growth spurt. They were going after that next big activity. They were going after that next big program. Some of them fell into financial scandal. Some of them fell into uh, moral scandal. Some of them fell into so many different things. Some of them just burn out and got out of ministry and got away from ministry, and some even got away from God. And all of it is because there was much activity, but there was very little worship that went on. So what was Jesus' remedy to this? Well, Jesus says to them, he wants them to be watchful. Be watchful. In other words, he says, uh, I want you to wake up. This term had strong significance for the church of Sardis. He said, I want you to wake up. Here's what he's saying to them. He's saying, become awake, stay awake. Don't allow yourself to fall back into the slumber. Stay awake, stay that way. Become awake and stay that way. This is what Jesus is telling them. The reason why this term, be watchful, would be important to them is because on two different occasions, Sardis was captured, and it was captured because of their failure to watch properly. I'll just cover this with you just quickly. This is one of the reasons why I like to study this church is because of these two events that I'm about to talk to you about. The first one was when uh, Cyrus, king of Medo-Persia, was besieging the kingdom when it was under the reign of Croesus. And the story uh, is told uh, by, uh, by the historian uh, or by a historian of the uh, careless uh, sentinel that was on the wall. And here's what ends up happening. There there is Cyrus that is besieging this city. Now, Sardis was an impregnable, or they thought an impregnable fortress. It was built high upon an acropolis. Here's how it was uh, formed. There were rocks that jetted out like a pier. Uh, over a river at the basin of the mountain, uh, Tamala said it's set upon, and those rocks jetted out, or the Acropolis jetted out, and they built that uh, citadel there on that Acropolis, and it was near impossible to be able to get through and to get into. And so there were armies that besieged it, some for days, some for weeks, some for months, and in some cases, some for years that tried to besiege it, they could not get in until one night when a young Mardian soldier that was under the command of Cyrus the Great uh, was watching as a sentinel, as a watchman was on the wall. And that watchman dropped his helmet and his helmet fell to the base of that Acropolis. Now, here is a spiritual principle. Here's a teachable principle right now I'm going to give you. The helmet in Scripture is always likened or typified uh, as a type of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. That's what the Apostle Paul writes about. He dropped his helmet, which means he got very careless with his safety, his salvation, his watch. And so what he did is he crawls over the wall. He scales down ever so gently and ever so carefully down to the base of that Acropolis, retrieves his helmet and crawls back up and back to his position. This young soldier, Mardian soldier of Cyrus's, commits to memory uh, the uh, direction that this young soldier goes. And with a handful of men, we're not talking about massive army, just a handful of men, he crawls up that wall the same way that men did. 
uh, with bringing him with him that handful of men over the wall they go and when they get over the wall they find that the city is unguarded why because they felt that it was impregnable it would never be broken into they'd never ever fall to the outside forces and so here comes this young soldier and Sardis fell that night to Cyrus the Great not because of a great onslaught but because of a handful of men that found a crack in the foundation in which they were able to crawl up. Now, fast forward a little ways, and now you've got the king of Bab uh, Persia that is fighting Alexander the Great. Alexander is going. He's up against Sardis. He's in much the same place that uh, Cyrus the Great was at when he was not able to penetrate that great citadel. And one of Alexander's young captains read the history of Cyrus's uh, besiegement against this, uh, uh, this great uh, uh, city. And he commits to memory what this young Mardian soldier had recorded in history. And he takes a few men with him. Finding the same flaw, he crawls up that wall and he takes just a handful of men and the same thing that Cyrus did in order to overthrow Croesus and take control is the same thing that Alexander the Great's man did. And they got in and a handful of men found the city, not watching, not paying attention. And they took it just with a handful of men. Here's the, here's the teachable principle. If it is a hamstring and a failure for one person, you better shore it up. You better tighten it up. You better clean it up because it's going to prove to be detrimental for you as well. There cannot be places in our life that have got cracks and breaks in them that allows the influences of the outside world in. We will eventually be caught sleeping. And when we're caught sleeping and not watching, that is when things begin to go awry. And so Jesus told them, he said, I want you to watch and I want you to pray because if you don't, the possibility of falling into temptation is great. Listen, I pray that you enjoy these videos that we share with you. If you do, we want you to like them, subscribe to them, share them, leave us some comments in the comment box and uh, just let us know what you think. Hey, it can be in favor of, it can even be against. I don't care, just be nice when you leave it if you, uh, if you are deciding to dissent against it. I love to interact with whoever might be leaving some notes, doesn't matter, favor or not. And we will see you in another video shortly. I pray you find new life today. Bye-bye.